right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started, everyone. <clears throat> All right, welcome, everybody. Uh, today is Tech Talk with Tim. Uh, we'll be discussing uh, miscellaneous peripherals and upgrades buying guide. We will learn about technical specifications and important considerations when you are in the market to purchase a memory upgrade, additional storage, monitors, webcams, etc. cetera. Uh, as always, we have Tim Hyatt. Uh, he will be, he is, um, he has a degree in commu computer sciences uh, and business administration. He owned and operated Hyatt Computer since 1999. A Hyatt Computer provides technical support and consulting services to dozens of nonprofit organizations and companies in the tri-state area. Um, <clears throat> uh, as you know, uh, this has been a series. Some of you have been with us from the start. Uh, others, you may be new to this. Uh, we do have a couple of more coming up. Uh, so today is Thursday the 20th. So the next one is on August 25th, which is a Tuesday. Then the following one is the 27th, which is a Thursday. And then the last one is Tuesday, September 1st. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to join us on those. If you have not signed up for those, just go to pssusa.org forward slash events and you can uh, re-register to attend the others. Uh, my name is Kevin Boyette. I am the Digital Resources Manager for PSS. Uh, PSS was founded in 1962 as an innovative multi-service agency whose mission is to strengthen the capacity of older New Yorkers, their families, and communities to thrive. Uh, we have educational and online programming. We have our 10 local centers, uh, which are there to help older adults stay healthy, engaged, and connected. We have our Circle of Care program, uh, which is there to help people who are caregivers so for someone who is frail, chronically ill, or has memory loss. Um, and then we also have our kinship caregivers program, which falls under that. Uh, that is for, say, example, like a grandparent raising a grandchild, something along those lines. Uh, so we do provide services for those caregivers. Uh, we do have programs for the youth as well. Uh, we do also have uh, our coming of age program. We manage the national and the New York City uh, branch of that program. It inspires people 50 plus to live with passion and purpose. If you want to learn more about any of those programs or about PSS in general, just visit us at pssusa.org. Thank you. Uh, just as a reminder to everyone, at the bottom, you should see an option for chat or Q&A. If you have any questions, we ask that you use the Q&A to submit any and all questions. You are welcome to use the chat, but uh, we do ask that you use the Q&A instead if possible. Otherwise, I pass it on to you, Tim. Great, thank you, Kevin. How are you, how are you doing, okay? So uh, thank you to everyone for joining us today. If you've uh, been on our previous uh, webinars, thank you for coming back, I appreciate it. And if you're new here, Welcome. I encourage you to ask questions along the way. Any questions you have are likely uh, shared by others in the audience. And it makes my job a lot easier if I know how the flow is going and if I can answer any questions that come up uh, as, they, as we go along. It's, it makes it more interesting for me as well. So, so anyway, thank you again for being here. Um, today we're talking about um, peripherals and upgrades. So let me, uh, let me switch over my shared screen here. And always a little bit of a challenge for some reason. I'm not sure why, but that's how I am. Okay, Kevin, how's that look? You see it? All right, great. So today we're talking about peripherals and upgrades, a buying guide, a presentation by me. Hi, Computer Consulting Services. There's my email address, there's my phone number, and these webinars are available online after, uh, after Kevin edits them and makes them perfect for display on the PSS website. So today we're gonna to talk about peripherals and, huh? hold on a second. The picture changed, oh my God. Okay, um, today we're gonna to talk about many of the miscellaneous peripherals and upgrades that are available to add functionality to the computer. Let's get started. I don't know why there's a laptop there. It's a gremlin. I've heard of these before, but I've never actually encountered one. Someone replaced my graphic with a, with a, with a laptop. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about um, was some of the little common upgrades. Uh, memory is by far one of those common upgrades people get for their computer. Um, 
I'll read this out and, and comment along the way. Okay, memory stands for uh, uh, memory, memory. In this case, it's called it's actually random access memory. It's also called RAM. Okay, uh, not to be confused with um, uh, hard drive storage space. Uh, your hard drive is used to store your documents and your pictures and actual files and information like that. Okay. Um, some people refer to that as memory, but it, and that's a kind of an archaic way of, t of referring to it. It's, a, it's what we call it storage or storage space in that case. We'll talk about that in a moment. But in this case, we're talking about memory, real memory, random access memory. Um, to, put it, to put it simply, the amount of uh, RAM your computer has uh, determines how fast it can think about things. Uh, or I'm sorry, not how fast, how many things it can think about at once. Um, and I have an example here. Imagine you have one, two notes in your hand and you can't only remember one at a time. You gotta swap back and forth to know what the notes say each time you wanna use them, right? Well, computers do a similar, a similar thing. Uh, they have this, uh, this, area, this, uh, this thing called memory, okay? And that's where it stores the things it's thinking about currently. It gives it readily available, very fast access, okay? Um, if you don't have a sufficient amount of memory in your computer, that's one of the places you're definitely gonna notice slowness. Um, what's happening is just like I use the word swap to talk about the nodes, right? Uh, we use that term as well in, in technology. Um, whenever there is an, an insufficient amount of memory on these memory chips, uh, the computer will, will swap memory from, uh, from what it's thinking onto the hard drive back and forth uh, because it can only handle so much uh, as determined by the amount of memory. So, um, uh, if it's having to swap a lot, that's where you see a slowdown, a very significant uh, uh, um, uh, cause of computer slowness. Um, let's see, the, uh, so let's go to the next page real quick and we'll finish up talking about memory. Okay, so this gets a little, this gets a little bit detailed, okay? We have a consideration for buying memory. And we'll go through this one at a time, each one's comment worthy, okay? Um, first of all, how much memory do you really need? Well. Uh, we talked about that with the computer buy, buying guide the other day, okay? Um, I, would, I would not consider buying a computer with less than 16 gigabytes of memory right now. Um, if your computer is older, okay, um, that's, that's another, another reason to get a little bit more memory, actually. Uh, it'll actually help an older computer run a little bit faster. Uh, so if your computer home has uh, four gigabytes of memory or eight gigabytes of memory right now, um, you don't, you don't actually doesn't consider upgrading. Uh, it's not that expensive, and you'll see a significant increase in the speed of the operation of the computer. Um, switching between programs, um, uh, uh, run, you know, uh, open, oh, uh, not open, so switching between programs, running certain programs. Okay, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see a difference definitely uh, if, you, if your computer is slow now. Um, well, so I want to buy memory. So on the bottom here, I've got a couple of examples of memory chips. These are these are kind of you know I can't make them. Uh, actual actual size because it depends on your monitor and things like that, but th that's that's pretty close to what they're going to be. Okay, here's a, here's a memory chip in my hand, right? Um, this we call this I I, I I say memory chip out of habit, but uh, memory stick is the more uh, the more appropriate name for this piece of equipment. Oh, I'm not holding up either. Um, this is what goes in the computer, and it goes in in pairs. Okay. Um, we always install two memory sticks at a time. The reason behind that is, is somewhat technical, okay? And that's, 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 that's what I say when I don't really know the answer. Uh, um, it, they run faster if you split them up into pairs. It's like, it's like splitting, the, splitting the workload on those, all right? So um, when you buy memory, okay, the first thing you need to figure out is how, how much memory do I need? Again, so, Again, I would say 16 gigabytes is a, is a good minimum for almost anybody at this point, okay? Uh, and if, you're, if you see slowness or if you're running a program that says, hey, you need this amount more memory, then, uh, then, then you might want, you can upgrade to 32 or 64 gigabytes of memory. Um, so I have one memory uh, stick in my hand now, okay? And by the way, as long as I'm holding it up, this, uh, these are, uh, these are, uh, the, the the, the reverse direction thing go, throws me, um, as does the virtual background. See those black, uh, see those black chips on my, where my finger's pointing right? Oops, like that, uh, one, two, three, four, right? Okay, those are called IC chips. Um, and that's what the actual memory is. The green stuff's just, uh, um, oh, what's it called? Um, 
the green is just the board that it's, that it's attached to, okay? And then the gold connectors in the bottom is where it plugs in the computer. So um, when, you buy, when you buy memory, you're gonna be buying a pair of something like this, okay? And again, it shows, I show you here down the bottom, the picture of it. And over on the motherboard on the right, we see this area here. Those are four slots. See that dark, there's a dark line running on each one. We looked at this with the computer buying guide the other day. Um, this computer has four memory slots available, okay? So we can put in up to four of these, all right? Um, most computers will allow you to plug in just one of the two, right? But it's not recommended. Uh, it just, you'll see a little a speed degradation perhaps, okay? And, and most computers also, all computers rather, um, have, a, have specific uh, places to put the memory. See, the, see how these slots, one pair is black and one pair is blue, okay? That was the manufacturer's way of, say, of telling us, okay, black is together and blue is together. So if I were to buy, if, let's say I got no memory in this computer for some reason, I need to buy something, right? I would put the first pair in either the black two or the blue two, right? Now, which one is it? I don't know. It depends on the mother. You got to look at the motherboard specifications. When you when you have a motherboard, you can go online. They'll tell you everything you want to know about the motherboard. All right, including uh, the the amount of memory it can accommodate. Okay, the um, uh, the type of memory and which of these pairs, which which, which of these uh, which of these slots to use. Okay, um, the uh, I don't think I covered this. But if, how many memory slots are available? Typically, typically, it's two or four. This motherboard has four slots available. Okay. Uh, some motherboards only have two, especially if it's a smaller computer, okay? Uh, laptops typically have two, but laptops use what's called a SO DIMMs, these little smaller memory chips here. Okay, they're about half the size of the regular memory chip. And for those of you who were here for our laptop buying guide, I opened that up and showed you where the chips go in there, if you might remember. So, um, so, uh, so we know now, we need to know, we, there's certain information we need to know. We need to know uh, how many slots are available because if we don't want to buy four of these and find that we only plug in two, right? And we also want to know the, t the speed, okay? Uh, the speed has to do with different technology built into memory, uh, memory sticks. Um, this one in particular, excuse me, I'll put my glasses on because I have to. And they held it, held it up this far away. Um, let's see. This one, for example, is a PC-12000, okay? PC-2-12000. Don't worry about the names and the numbers and the letters. It's just, you just what you gotta know is you gotta get the right type, okay? And in case, if you do get the wrong type, you won't be able to install it. it you'll know you got the wrong type because you won't be able to install it. As we talked about the other day, there's that little, the little slot there in the bottom, right? That matches the motherboard uh, sl uh, memory slots there, okay? So you can't, you can't really plug in the wrong way. Um, they won't let you. So, um, so we need to determine the speed of the memory to match to the motherboard we have, right? And the last consideration that I didn't put on here, I should have, has to do with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, what, the, uh, what the motherboard can accommodate. There's uh, some, some computers, there's limits to how much memory you can put on, not, not, not the number of computer chips, but the amount of memory. 32, you know, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. If your computer, for some reason, you want 256 uh, uh, gigabytes of RAM, right? Well, um, it, the motherboard might very well, very might, very likely won't allow you to add that much. There's, there's certain limits it puts on it just for technological reasons. So you also want to make sure that you get the right, you know, the, the, you not exceed the the, uh, the capabilities of the computer. Uh, typically, if you do something like that, it just won't use it. It'll, it's smart enough to keep working, but just won't, you, you just won't see any improvement from it. Um, let's see. Let's see, the, 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 the brands available, uh, one of those common brands is Kingston, you've heard of, uh, maybe? Okay, Kingston, and I've got that written down there. Uh, and others are self-branded um, by like whoever's selling them, like Amazon might have their own brand. Um, I, I recommend, like with most everything else in the computer world, to go with the with the name brand. Okay, um, memory can be funny. It's a, it's a if, if there's something wrong with this, it's it's with most things, with most things in our computer world, if something's not, if something's broken or not quite right, it either works or it doesn't work. Right, with memory, that's that can also be the case. It works or doesn't work, but it can also it's so complicated and so much going on that you just see bizarro things happen, okay? Just, just, just 
stuff has no explanation, like a picture, you know, dots on the screen or move, things moving around. Just any number of things can happen if the, if the memory is uh, defective. Um, speed, I said, determined by motherboard specs. Okay, the type, different PCs and laptops. We talked about that. We got the regular computer chip here and laptop chip here. Okay. So why pairs? We talked about that um, because that's big, big, shares the load. Okay. Why does it double in size? Well, that's, uh, that goes back to, uh, you know, in our computer world, we, we live in a binary world. It's, very, it's on or off, basically. And that's how data is stored on, on magnetic devices. The, the little magnetic spot is either magnetized or not. And depending on that, you extrapolate the, the, the letters and numbers and words and things like that by the number of dots that are on or off, okay? And as a result, everything, everything in our world is, is, is basically binary, it doubles. Um, and so that's, that's, that's why you'll see it almost always things are in pairs or always double with computers. Um, the, uh, the, 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 when, you, when you buy the chips, they'll, they'll typically ship in pairs. If you, if you go online and you see an ad or you, see, or you want to buy 16 gigabytes of memory, right? If you look closely, it'll say something like, I can put it down here on the bottom, right? It'll say, if you buy 16 gigabytes of memory, it'll say 16 gigabytes. That should say, um, that should say uh, two times eight gigabytes. So it'll say 2x8 gigabyte. That tells us it's two eight gigabyte memory states, okay? Um, so you'll get these in pairs, okay? Um, another uh, important piece of advice is uh, a lot of times people just, uh, I'll say, let's, let's say you have two slots that are filled and you got 16 gigabytes of memory total for two, two, two chips, right? So you say, gee, I want to double mine to 32. Well, uh, in that case, I need to buy two more eight gigabyte chips, so I have a total of four, eight, four, you know, two, two pairs of four for a total of 32. It's very common practice just to add memory on like that. Um, however, it, it lends itself to problems, unfortunately. Uh, subtle, weird problems that, you know, that you'll just never be able to identify or duplicate, okay? Uh, my official recommendation is whenever, and because the prices are low these days, my official recommendation is when you are upgrading the computer memory uh, in your computer, um, just go ahead and take the old chips out and just you know, save them for a nephew or throw them away, whatever. Um, you don't want to mix and match. And that's even from the same manufacturer because um, they came out of the plant on a different day. There's so much going on with these things that any, any subtle difference can lead to, a, can lead to weird problems. So uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's, not, it's not a cost-effective solution, but it, 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 might, it might solve you some headaches in the future. Okay? Um, let's see, uh, where can I get memory? Well, uh, you can buy it locally a lot of times, but uh, the, stock is, the stock is weird because memory changes so often and the uh, speed and price changes so often that stores don't want to keep it. Um, so you're better off buying it online from either Amazon or 1-800-for-memory.com. Um, uh, the the, the, the 1-800-memory has a, uh, has a, has a uh, memory selection utility. Ask what's the name of your computer? What's the type? What's that, that, that? And it'll tell you exactly what you need. So that's very useful. Um, uh, the cost is volatile right now. I think things are up because of the because of the virus, and there's a, you know a, the, there's things aren't shipping for China like they have in the past. Okay, um, but right now you're going to pay around sixty dollars for a pair of eight gigabyte computer sticks. Okay, so if you wanted to if you wanted to put in if you had sixteen gigabytes of memory in your computer and you want to go to thirty two, my recommendation is to buy two pairs of eight gigabyte computer sticks for $120, plug those in, you'll have a total of 32 gigabytes of memory, and you just throw out the, the 16 you took out. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, uh, Kevin, did that, did that elicit any questions right here? No, I can't hear you. At this, at this moment, we don't have any questions submitted. Okay. Well, my, my, uh, obviously, my explanation is uh, spot on. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, I think I covered that pretty well. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about monitors. Um, uh, a, com you know, the, uh, a, a most common peripheral, right? Uh, peripheral, by the way, comes from a periphery, right, uh, on the outside. Um, Monitors are a common replacement, not necessarily for, for damage or, uh, or for not working, because they seem to work forever these days. But um, if, uh, if your monitor is, um, if you want to get a bigger monitor, for example, or it does die for some reason, or you want a second monitor, um, this is some, some information to be, to, to be taken into consideration. And by the way, I want to mention this. When you clean your monitor, don't use alcohol spray. Just 
light, get the get the paper, get a paper towel, and just make it lightly damp, just enough that it that, that it'll, it'll get rid of the dust without smudging, without leaving behind or whatever. Uh, you don't want to use any chemicals on that screen because it'll leak down the, the, the around the edge of the, of the case, right? And it'll, it has potential to damage it there. So only, only use a lightly damp paper towels. Okay. Um, with monitors and every other device, every other peripheral, we have to be concerned about how it connects to the computer. Um, and as we saw in the computer guide, by every computer has what's called ports in the back. It has a place to plug things in. Same thing with the monitor. The monitor is going to come with a power uh, power port, right? And it's also typically going to come with one or two common types of connectors for the monitor to computer connection. Okay. Um, the um, oof, I didn't edit very well today. Uh, there are four common types of connectors: HDMI, Display Port, DVI, and VGA. Uh, VGA is old technology. Display port was uh, was brief. The what you're going to see mostly these days is HDMI. That's the current uh, type of connector. Um, uh, most monitors will come with HDMI and VGA or DVI and VGA, um, just depending on what's what's popular at that time, whatever. Um, uh, but anything, anytime you do get a monitor with a port that doesn't match, you can always uh, you can always buy an adapter to downgrade. And and what I mean by downgrade is if I, if I have a monitor that uses an HDMI connector, which is the newest technology, then I can't, it's not always gonna work well when you, when you plug it into a, a, a computer with a, with a slower, older technology, but vice versa works fine. Um, I said that backwards? I think I said that backwards. So if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're going from newer technology to older, it works fine. From older to newer, it's not gonna have all the information it needs. Um, so, um, no, I know another missing picture. Um, so, uh, typically if you look in the back of your, uh, back of the computer, we saw that last, the last week where you got the different types of video connectors, you're going to want to make sure that when you look at the mon when you buy a monitor, you're going to look at the specs and it's going to tell you what type of ports are on the back and what sort of cables it provides. Okay. And you just want to make sure that the cables they're providing matches the ports in your PC. And if not, you just got to buy an adapter for it. It's no big deal. Um, they're different. Why are wireless? Guys, I don't know what happened. I've seen all sorts of all sorts of weird things on this display. Maybe maybe my memory is bad, Kevin. Huh? Why are wireless? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over that that, that first part. So um, the type that doesn't belong there. Uh, type of monitors. Uh, the, the type of monitors is defined by the this the, the, the basically the size. Okay. Uh, 22 inch monitor, 24 inch monitor, that sort of thing. And the, the size is measuring, the, is, is, is taken by measuring from one corner diagonally to the other, okay? Um, and you don't take the, the case into account. You just take the actual screen part, okay? And you measure from one corner to the other. And that tells you how big the monitor is. A um, couple of salesy things going on. The monitor's like, let's say, you know, it's 21.6 inches. And they call it 22. Okay, they're always upgrading just to get the extra, extra uh, space. You know, imply there's extra space on there. Um, the, um, let's see. Uh, the 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 other technical specifications to consider when buying a monitor, in addition to the ports we just talked about, is the response time. Okay, how fast how, you know, how fast it, it changes based on the computer information being provided. Right, uh, the refresh rate, is, which is which is also really the response time. But it's more or less uh, how fast the images can update, so that you see uh, motion looks clear as opposed to like a blur. Okay, and then the resolution, um, which is how much information will be stored uh, per inch on the screen, for example. So, um, in all of these cases, especially the ports, it's, it has to do with the, the computer itself, what you need for the computer. But the other stuff. For most users, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Even even for even for gaming systems, uh, the most LCD monitors or standard LCD monitors are going to work fine for almost all applications. Um, you look at the reviews online, you see what people complain about. One of the more common complaints with some of these monitors is the um, uh, the the black uh, how the how the black level, right? So if if it's supposed to be all black, you can still see it's kind of glowing a little bit, all right? 
so the blacker a smarter gets, the better. It's just a range from black to, to bright white. Um, <clears throat> the, um, oh, um, another thing to consider when you're buying a monitor. Um, uh, you've heard of these, these things on the monitor. <laughs> I can point to it, it's not gonna help. Uh, you know, on your, on your monitors, you've got little, little tiny squares, the LC, L, LED lights or LCD lights that, um, that display an individual color and then join together to make whatever the picture is. Um, what you'll get sometimes is when you buy a monitor, it'll have dead pixels. You'll look at it and you'll, say, you'll see there's one, little, one or two black dots right there, okay? And you will notice them every single time you turn on your computer, <laughs> right? Um, if you're like me. Um, a lot of the stores and the manufacturers, they don't have a policy. They'll say, oh, well, our policy is uh, if, if it's, okay, it's, okay, it's okay, we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna replace it or fix it if it's got less than five dead pixels, okay? Don't, don't let them sell you that bill of goods. Uh, you, you take the monitor back and just, uh, and just return for a refund if you have to, you know what I mean? But, don't, uh, but uh, you wanna scan the monitor for dead pixels when you first get it. Um, historically, you used to be able to thump the screen a couple times to see if it would make them live, but that doesn't work very often these days. Um, the uh, screen size depends on the depends on your needs. Okay, um, typically real estate, it, 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 your, the real estate and the cost. You know, larger monitors, of course, cost more. You also find yourself like you sit in the front row of a movie theater. You got to crane your head back to see the top of the screen. You don't want that either, right? Um, and you also don't want the thing hanging out the edge of the desk, right? Um, so uh, taking the size of the the big, bigger is better. Okay. Uh, within your own budget and and uh, physical space needs. Okay, um, let's see. You can buy online or at the store. Common brands are Dell and HP. Um, um, I'm not a big fan of the off brands. You know, you get this. this you're gonna be looking at. It. You've been looking at it a lot, a lot, a lot of time, right? So you want to get something that's real, relatively good in this case. Um, you can buy online or at the store. The cost of a monitor, you know, twenty inch monitor now is probably, <clears throat> excuse me, probably around hundred and thirty dollars. Um, uh, a nice 22 inch monitor, maybe 150. Um, Dell sells them with warranties if you want that. All right. Um, so the, the price, it's not too pricey. I mean, uh, it's uh, price is no longer really a factor when you talk about getting dual monitors, which at the end here say, do yourself a favor, add a second monitor. I, I get, I, I, I predict you will look me up and somehow find me to thank me if you add a second monitor to your setup. It's nothing that's a, it makes a world of difference. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Kevin, any questions so far? Uh, no questions at this time. All right. All right, so we're gonna go on the next slide. Let's see what, let's see what this slide, so surprise this next slide has for us. Aha, uh -huh. now there's something missing here. Hold on a second. I think I, I think I skipped one or something. Kevin, I wrote over one of my slides. That's what I did. Hmm. Huh, what was I talking about? Oh, I know what it was. Okay, so sorry guys. Um, the the keyboard and mouse slide is is missing. I think I can I can think I can successfully describe this pretty well. Um, the other most common uh, thing to replace on a computer is either not <clears throat> not necessarily because of damage or overuse, but just because uh, maybe maybe it's gotten dirty. You know, these keyboards are filthy sometimes. <clears throat> mouse gets gummed up a little bit. Um, or you just feel like a change, you want something better, whatever, whatever right? Um, whenever you're buying a keyboard and a mouse, that's where my type came in here, the type wired, wireless, or conventional layout or not. Um, there are uh, a key, your typical keyboard, this is a, you know, I have a wireless keyboard, which you can't see because of the virtual screen. Um, I prefer a wireless keyboard and mouse just because like, like most people, I, I feel a little bit constrained by the, uh, by the, the, the cord, as long as it catches on things, knock stuff over, whatever. Uh, the, the wireless technology is not to be confused with, um, not to be confused with the wireless network. It uses a different technology for communicating. Um, so there's no, uh, there's no conflict there. But um, typically what happens with a wired keyboard or wired mouse is going to connect to the back of your PC via USB cable, almost 100% of the time. Uh, for a wireless solution, the computer needs to connect to a, I a picture. I don't have it. Um, the, the, the mouse and the keyboard need to be able to communicate with the computer. 
well, how are they going to communicate with the computer? Well, it's a little USB device. It's about the size, about the size of my thumb, right, or less. Uh, you plug it into the front of the back, and then the keyboard and the mouse, which usually come you know, by, a, by a pair, right, um, the keyboard and the mouse that can then see the can, can communicate with the computer uh, wirelessly. Um, my recommendation is that you put that device on the front of the computer because if there is any um, if there is any uh, interference of communication between these devices and your computer, you'll see a little bit of lag, like the mouse won't move quite right, or you might miss a key on the keyboard, whatever. Um, so if you do get the wireless, the wireless type, which I recommend, um, you're going to want to put the USB key thing that goes on the computer on the front rather than the back. Um, let's see. Uh, the other thing I want to mention was different types of layouts. Uh, some of you guys may have heard of the uh, ergonomic keyboard. Okay. Uh, that, that, uh, as far as I know, it doesn't seem to have really, really caught on. I haven't even seen one in a it's been years since I've seen one. But the ergonomic keyboard is one of the ones where Rather than, rather than typing like this, right? Look at Frankenstein. Rather than typing like this, you, this is a more natural sort of a, so you, 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 your, your hands come in from like a, 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 an angle towards the keyboard, okay? Now, I've been typing a long, long time, right? And I am not about to start typing on the diagonal. I, I could lose my mind. So uh, it's a, it's, it's, it's just, it just never caught on. And, and one of the reasons, uh, by the way, uh, that, that new ideas rarely catch on in our world uh, as far as like uh, why we're very conservative with sticking with the things that are tried and true is because a keyboard and mouse is that something you're going to use not only at home but you're going to use it at uh, per perhaps a friend's house or at your office or whatever okay so in the case of a keyboard and mouse you want those to be as generic as possible because you don't want to be switching back and forth between types right and that's why uh, that's why we that's why the ergonomic keyboard didn't catch on, and different types of mice rarely catch on. Um, with most cases, you know, the mice has a, the mouse has a um, uh, a roller, right, um, and then two buttons. Sometimes you get mouse, uh, a pointing device with extra buttons that you can assign functionality. A lot of these the keyboard mice they're, they're programmable as well, where you can tell it, okay, I want if I if I press if I hold down the shift key and press F five, I want this to happen. It'll let you tell the keyboard how what to set in the computer. And same with the mouse, it has different buttons on there. You can assign different things. Okay. Um, the final comment on that is uh, sometimes, in the, in the case of our, our friends who are fond of accounting, um, we can add a tr uh, a a a a, 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 mouse, a, a calculator on the, on the side, especially with laptops. Um, so it has the number pad that the are the, the accountants or bookkeepers might want to use on their computer. So that's the mouse keyboard and number pad. Okay. Kevin, how are we doing? Uh, we're good. Uh, no questions right now. All right. All right. Um, yeah, like I said, the mystery slides here. Okay. So I don't think I actually raised anything else. Um, I was, I told Kevin earlier, the last, the last slide and the last part of this uh, presentation, we're going to talk about some of the, the, the some of the other things you add on because uh, we talked about the monitors and the keyboard and the mouse and the um, <clears throat> the uh, memory because those are common upgrades. Um, and now I just made a list of other things that we can add on to the, the computer. Uh, uh, what other peripherals? Okay. If you think of one that I didn't mention here, just out of curiosity, or, or if you if you if you have a specific question about one that I'm not talking about here, please type it in your question thing, and then Kevin will bring it to my attention as we go through this, okay? Um, so, common devices, an external CD drive. Um, this is more common with laptops where they don't have, maybe the smaller laptop, smaller, thinner laptop doesn't have the space to accommodate a CD drive. So you can buy one that plugs in using the USB cable. Same thing with a floppy disk drive. Very uncommon, but still necessary. Um, the, um, uh, software upgrades to 747s are installed using uh, three and a half inch floppy disks still. Um, let's see, speakers. We have different types of speakers. Uh, uh, the, uh, typically, uh, typically uh, you'll have a, a speaker set. Uh, used to be you have to, you have to be powered to where you would have to have a couple different cables coming out of the speaker. You have the audio cable and the power cable. Um, but some genius had this idea: well, why not use the USB power for the speakers? So now. 
both speaker wires, the power and the audio, just plug directly into the computer rather than going to the power on the wall. Um, speaking of power, one thing I did forget about the mice keyboard. Um, with the wireless solution, okay, um, you do have to use batteries in both the mouse and the keyboard. This is not the case of the wired keyboard or wired mouse, um, but in the case of, uh, the case of wireless, uh, you're going to have to replace the batteries once in a while. Um, okay, so we're talking about external hard. Okay, next thing, external hard drive. Um, why would I want an external hard drive? Well, hard drives fill up on the computer sometimes when you have too much information, too many pictures, whatever, right? You need a place to, to add, add space without going to too much trouble. An external hard drive plugs into the USB cable, boom, you're done. Um, and it, it's added like a new drive. Like it's, there's your C drive, which is the hard drive, right? And then you have a D drive for the CD-ROM. And all of a sudden, now you've got an E drive when you plug it in. It's all automatic. Um, external hard drives are used for, um, for both extra storage as well as backups, all right? And there's no, no mystery going here. Uh, the same hard drive that's in your computer is in an external hard drive that just put a pretty cover on it. Um, Oh, I skipped to speakers. So speaker, I skipped to speakers. We we're talking about that. Um, you know, uh, speakers. You're gonna spend like twenty, thirty dollars for a nice pair of speakers. Um, and uh, you want to be concerned about with some speakers. Some speakers with this, uh, the, have the have magnetics inside them. And as you move them closer to the monitor, especially the older CRT monitors, you might see some some effect on that. Um, but uh, you just uh, just uh, keep your speakers. Uh, if you see that, just uh, keep your speakers an inch or so away from the monitor. Um, next is the headset, like a friend Kevin here is wearing, right? Um, headsets are used in the, in a case where you you want to be able to listen without without a uh, without being distracted too much by the noise around you, right? Or 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 without distracting the people around you by the noise coming out, right? Um, there are noise canceling headsets that uh, that somehow somehow trick the brain into not hearing the noise out there. It has some sort of anti noise effect. Um, but typically, uh, you'll see these used mostly by gamers or people who do a lot of broadcasting on uh, like these web this type of webinar stuff or meetings. Um, let's see some speaker. A lot of times, the speakers have like a boom microphone. Okay, that goes like that, right? Um, or, or you can have a separate microphone. Uh, the computer on the both the front and the back is going to have the that the audio jack, the two point five inch audio jack, standard audio jack that plug that you can plug in those speakers and a and a microphone. Okay, other possibilities include uh, uh, game pads, right? For certain games, if you want to add like a, a Nintendo type controller, okay. Um, printers are considered peripherals, as are scanners, microphone we just talked about, joystick for gaming, right? And finally, uh, one interesting one is the virtual reality equipment. This is the next next big thing. Um, you've seen, you've probably seen the videos online or seen, just heard about it where you get you get this big, this big bulky headset thing that's in front of you, that basically broadcasts a display to your, to your eyes, so you you don't see what's around you, but rather what the computer wants you to see. So, this is a this is a big deal. Um, it's going to be used extensively in training uh, in the future. Okay. No longer than that, you put yourself in danger to actually do real, 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 realistic type training of like putting out fires or whatever. Um, it's also going to change travel as we know it. Um, you're going to be able to. <laughs> this is crazy. You're going to be able to walk up, walk out of your living room into Paris, France. Um, now, the, the, they're still working on the whole motion thing where you got to kind of stay in one spot, right? Because we don't have enough space to move around, right? But once that, once that's figured out. Um, Boy, you think people are homebodies now? Uh, it's really going to eliminate eliminate a lot of the need for travel. You can see you can see you can see just the same as if you were there. Um, so virtual reality equipment is another common peripheral that's going to be uh, used uh, in the future, right? Um, and just just as a, there's, just, there's some silly USB things out there, like there's a co a coffee warmer, right, and a fan, all right? It's more novelty than anything else. Just, a, just something fun. So. Um, we do have All a right. question. Okay, yes, please. Uh, how difficult is it to replace speakers? To replace speakers? I would have to say that's probably one of the most easy things to replace on the computer. Um, excuse me a second. Okay. I happen to have in my pile of technology, as you might imagine, Instead of speakers, okay. 
and is wrapped up in a set of everything else. Um, with speakers, uh, basically what you're going to have, you're going to have the, the standard 2.5 inch uh, output on them. And I'll find it. Of course, I'm having difficulty because people are watching, which makes it harder. I'm going to grab them here. Okay. This is. Oh, Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I am wearing shorts. Um, this is uh, the regular uh, speaker connector, right? Okay. So when you want to add speakers to any, any device, including a computer, you need to connect the, the audio portion, right? Mm. Oh, you see that? This is weird. And the power, okay? The power may be a separate power source, like one of these guys, okay? Like a power cord, right? A power transformer. Or it can be a USB cable, whatever the speaker has. So, so with the speaker, with the speakers, you don't have to do anything like configure the computer or anything. You just got to unplug what's there and plug in what you got. And you got two types, two things, the power and the data. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I, I believe that answers the question. Okay, but they'll let us know we don't. Okay, uh, any other questions, Kevin? Uh, not at this time, but I do want to remind people, if you do have questions, you can type it into the Q&A or you can type it into the chat. I do want to... Uh, uh, speak up and just let people know that I did add links in the chat to um, our resources page on PSS's website so that if you want to look at the past webinars, they are there because I've had a few people ask, have they been posted? Mm -hmm. Yes, they have been. They are on there. And I also included a link to the uh, our webinar uh, playlist on YouTube that has all of our past webinars, not just this one, but others. So if you want to go there, you can check that out as well. Uh, we update it generally uh, Wednesday of each week, and we only show the six most recent. So next week, they may not be there. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that, uh, thank you. That reminded me of something else too. Um, the USB uh, connectors in a in the on the PC, right? The USB ports, which for those who you know, for this, the, these things, you recognize that, of course, right? The the standard connector, uh, those are all powered. That means they have a little trickle of electricity going there, and that's why you can plug in your devices, like a like a if you have a phone in charging or an iPad, you can plug it into the front of the PC, and they'll provide power to recharge the battery. Um, so what we could do is we can open this up to any questions if anyone has. Uh, so I'll give it like a couple of seconds to see if we can yes. get any new questions. Otherwise, if not, then we can go on to your, your shameless plug, of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so does anyone have any questions? Uh, now's the time to pop those in onto the Q&A. As we're doing that, a couple more things to mention. Um, the, the, the one person that asked about the difficulty replacing speakers, uh, one of the great things about the computer is you can't really plug in things the wrong way. And I, I don't mean like you can't because it's forbidden. I mean you can't because it won't fit. Okay? So if you're trying to plug in the monitor, right, there's only one place to plug it in. If you're trying to plug in the speakers, there's only one place to plug it in, except, except the microphone input is the same, right? But you're not going to hurt anything by plugging in the wrong place. You just got to figure it out. Look at the picture. One looks like a speaker. One looks like a microphone. One looks like a headset, right? Um, so uh, don't be uh, don't be too uh, concerned about these doing these replacements. Um, everything I've talked about so far, you'd, you'd really kind of have to try to screw it up. Um, it's so it's so standardized now and so easy to do. Um, if you're doing if, if you're doing some sort of upgrade replacement. A, an incredible resource is YouTube, okay? YouTube used to be a place where could, people could upload videos of their families or dogs and cats or whatever, right? Um, and it's tr it has transformed itself. It's emerged you know, like a butterfly. Um, if you need to know how to do anything, <laughs> you go on YouTube and it'll show you. Because people like to contribute to this thing in that respect. You have experts in every field Will show you that it will show you in the video how to do what you need to do. So you could literally build a house if you had if you had YouTube uh, sitting there available. So same um, thing goes for the computer. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that actually is a great statement right there because we did get a question, and their question is, "I have a webcam, but can't figure out how to attach it." Okay. 
your webcam is more than likely going to be a USB device, okay? And again, this is a, this, this sort of connector, right? Uh, your PC is going to have these on the front and the back. And you see, you see how it's got like the, the black area, the silver area? That's actually hollow, right? And the white, the white is plastic, okay? Um, so you, you can't physically install it upside down. It only goes in one way, all right? So um, don't be afraid, okay? Go ahead and uh, go ahead and plug it in. Once you plug it in, Windows should see the device and ask you some questions about how do you how do you want it set up? Like how, how do you want to use it? What do you want the resolution to be? Um, uh, that's 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 one of the beauty of like USB. It's called plug and play. So you plug it in, and the computer sees it and asks you what you want to do with it. So uh, don't be shy about that. Just plug it in, and if nothing does come up. There is a there is a web uh, a webcam or a input area on the control panel where it will allow you to test the web camera and to, to use it as to try to use it as an example. Oh, I remember what I was talking about. Okay, um, especially in the case of laptops, um, the USB ports. Uh, we find ourselves wondering, well, I want to charge my phone, I want to charge my iPad, I want to plug it in this, I want to plug it on a webcam. It's very possible to run out of USB ports, and that's why they sell they sell what are called USB hubs. Okay. A USB hub is going to look about the size of a phone, okay? Um, and basically, it allows you to plug that hub into one USB port on your computer, right? And then it'll split up to four or eight devices, okay? There's no degradation in quality of signal or anything like that. It, f it functions the same way as power does in this case, where um, the, the split taking one port and splitting it into more, there's so much space available for transmitting data it doesn't care, okay? It's not gonna slow down because you're using one port for eight devices. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a common, that's another common peripheral I wanted to talk about was the USB hub, so. Uh, someone asked, uh, what do the different colors on USB plugs mean? Well, it's finally happened. Someone asked something I don't know, <laughs> mortified. <laughs> Okay, when you say different colors, um, are you talking about like on the on the USB port on the computer, or are you talking about the USB on the uh, on the on the, the the plug? Let's see what they have to say about that. Yeah, because I was wondering because if you look at the image that you are sharing, Tim, uh, uh -huh. right there, that little pad, that right there is the end of a USB port, and it's it's black right there on the plastic, and then the metal, of course, is metal, and that goes into right. the PC. So if they're talking about that plastic being black, and then maybe others being like white, green, yellow, whatever, there really is no difference. Well, that's, that's what they're referring uh, well, white, to. green, and yellow, I, 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 you're talking about the, the cable itself or inside? Because, you know, I think I know what they're talking about. On the computer itself, sometimes you'll see there's USB ports that some, some of them are blue and some of them aren't, okay? And I know how to find out. He says, I have yellow and blue on my laptop. Okay, excellent. I'm glad you're asking that. We're going to learn this together. This is a technician's best friend. But the key is you got to know how to, how to type the question to get the right answer. Okay. Oh, look at that. Different colors. How about that? Okay. See, so the receptacle is not, a, it's a, just a matter of my vendor. It looks like it doesn't have much to do with it for the most part. However, um, I think there's a white versus black. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see there's a white thing there and there's a black thing there. Um, and then, blue. okay, I see what it is. Okay. Uh, although USB, USB has been around a while, the technology, but there's been an increase in speed. Okay. Um, so that uh, certain USB devices require a little more power than older USB devices. And for those of you that have iPhone, uh, you'll recognize that from the, the, the car charges you get. You plug in your iPhone for, for an hour and it charges 5%. That's because the car phone charger is putting out one, I think it's one volt or one amp on that electrician. Um, same thing with the, the the device on the computer. They're designed this this to give this this has this doesn't have to do with the data, although one's faster than the other. It has to do with the, the amount of power that's being transferred. Okay, so um, what's happened then? If, if, and or, or I'm sorry, it has to do with the data and the power. In this case, it's the data. I said the backwards guy. Sorry. 
there's the USB 3.0, which is the, the current newest version of USB speed, okay? If you have a newer device that needs or requires USB 3 speeds, you don't want to use the blue plug, okay? That's all that's saying. For the most part, you don't have to worry about this. It's, it's very, you know, it's, it's very cross-platform. The only time I've seen any difference was, uh, was, in a, was, with, a, was with power, where the power is not sufficient to charge a lot of devices. Like, you, get, you, can't charge your, you can't charge your iPad very well on a USB hub that only puts out one volt or one amp because it's just not enough power. I also found something, and I don't know how true this is because, you know, the Internet's the Internet. <laughs> um, so it's showing me that, you know, there's different types, so like the port on the um, PC itself. If it's yellow on this website, it says those that are yellow, orange, or red could mm -hmm. be uh, USB sleep and charge ports where that the, if you plug into it, if your computer's asleep, it'll still charge your devices. <sighs> the computer's asleep. Uh, that's a, that's a, that'd be a new, very unusual circumstance. You know, with computers, I, basically, there's on and off, right? But there's a sleep function where you can kind of like have it all the way off except a little trickle of power, right? Um, I don't think that's so common anymore, though. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it depends on how old the laptop that they have. Or yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I would, uh, sir or madam, what I would do in that case, uh, you, can, you can look online real quick and see the differences are between different types. Um, I wouldn't worry about it until it becomes a problem. I just use them all the same. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, they could always look at their computer model and see what the specs are. Because sometimes exactly. you get those, because exactly. you know, you go online, you look at laptops or something, and they yes. have like little images where they're pointing a line at the port yeah. oh, and tell yeah. you what it yeah. is. So it's all I mean, there. You could always do that. It, I looked up. I looked up a frying pan my mom had that was bought in 1965, and I found <laughs> the manual online. I'm so proud of myself. So, any other questions, sir? Uh, as of now, no. Uh, so, if you want to go into your shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. we can. I love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I just want at the end here, in addition to thanking everyone for attending or for 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 being here, uh, the audience. Um, uh, my company provides uh, technical support services for other small businesses in New York City and New Jersey. As such, our business model does not apply to residential help or for help for individuals. So uh, we, I'm saying we're not available to do that. We're too, we're too expensive, I guess. However, my friend Jonathan King here, um, great guy, lives in Inglewood, New Jersey. He, uh, he does that type of work. He will come to your house. He will get on the phone. He, he specializes in being very patient and very friendly and uh, very inexpensive from what I hear. Um, so if you have any help, you need help at home, I would encourage you to call John. You can see his number and his email, email address on the bottom of the screen. And it's available on the previous set, set webinars we've done. So you can get it off the PSS website immediately as well. All right? Yes. All Thank right. you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so I'm going to flip over to my slide on my end. OK. All right. All right, everyone. Okay, uh, so again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, as a reminder, if you're interested in other events, uh, you could always go to our website at pssusa.org forward slash events where you can check out all of our other upcoming events, workshops, uh, webinars, and such. Uh, I want to thank Tim again for joining us and going over this uh, great information. Uh, it's always good to learn something new. Um, if anyone has any other questions, you know, you could always uh, reach out to us um, by replying to your registration link. It'll get sent to me. Uh, otherwise, I hope to see you all next Tuesday at one for our next webinar. And again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kevin. Bye, everybody. <laughs>